I am recently returned from the International Double Read Society Conference that took place this year in Columbus, Georgia. And I have to say that it was awesome. There are vendors, so you end up spending more money than you could ever imagine, but in a good way because you're not paying shipping and everything you could ever imagine testing as well as cutting edge products that are new on the market are available to you. And well, it's like my giraffe ate all my money, but totally worth it. Okay, let's dig into the things that I got as part of the International Double Read Society Conference. Um, everybody who went to the conference got an International Double Read Society tote bag, which has the Columbus, Georgia logo on it, which is great because as you're shopping through the vendors, of course, you're going to need a way to carry all of your goodies and a fancy tote was just the way to do it. While I was there at the vendors, I met up with a new friend of mine from Adante Arondo Reed, Giorgio, and I had heard about him from some of my friends that are students at Columbus State University, and they were mentioning how much they liked his booth and also his reads. I tried some of his reads and was fascinated by them. The Hertzberg reads were very, very dark. Some of the darkest sounds I've ever had on my own playing. And the uh, reads that he had that were made in the Rieger 1A shape, which is my standard, were very similar in sound and response to what I produce. So from his booth, I went ahead and I got some Rieger 1A a gouge shaped and profiled cane. And this cane is from Italy because that's where Dante and Rondo is at and it is homegrown and aged. So I'm interested to give this a go. Let me know if you wanna see a cane review on it. And I also picked up a ceramic cloth. Now this is a blue ceramic sanding cloth. Um, so you can use this on reeds much like you would use sandpaper, but instead of it being like 200 or 400 or 1000 grit, this is uh, ceramic. So I'm interested to see how this works out. A little bit more about his reeds. He does um, very fascinating elements to his reeds. Uh, he uses no second wire. He uses a first wire that is triple wrapped and a third wire that is also triple wrapped, but absolutely no second wire. He has also done some things that I think other bassoonists might think are a little bit cray cray. Uh, you know, just kind of out there and wild. Like he, of course, has his own cane, so he has made reeds out of green cane and then performed on them. And green cane means that it is not aged in the sun, it is harvested, and then straight from harvest, he has made it into reeds. So um, I completely was fascinated by his booth. He can make a reed in two minutes, or so he claims. Um, I found this hilarious because he did make three reads in 10 minutes and uh, of course he's doing it as a demo so that is going to slow things down and also that he kept saying that I was so distracting that it was slowing things down as well but um, his read making style great to watch and he is producing them quickly and effectively which is unique in today's world as well. Next to my friend uh, Julie and David's booth from Barton Kane was Vocal Majority. And Vocal Majority does a great job of putting on summer camps for double read players throughout the nation. Um, I spoke to them a little bit about whether or not there would be an interest in this area to go ahead and put on a camp. If you are interested, be sure to leave me a comment. It would be a week of read making with me as well as um, chamber music, all of the good things, air support, embouchure, everything you can think of. Um, they were so sweet to me, I love them. They gave me this little uh, badge for my conference badge that said trendsetter, because they thought I was changing trends, which I was like, oh, I'm so honored. I have an official ribbon. And on top of that, they gave me this fantastic soaking cup, which has little owls and flowers on that. Um, I love these soaking cups, and I should have probably gotten about 10 more because I love to use these when my students come for lessons, and they always enjoy when they have a fancy print on them, so I will probably be putting another order in. The teacher side of me absolutely loved Boca Majority because they have sticky notes, and these sticky notes have on them a bass clef staff, and not only do they have a bass clef staff, they have the uh, fingering for the bassoon. So you can write in the name of the note and then go ahead and then write in the fingering directly under it and then it's a sticky note and you can put it in your music and then you have it as a quick reference. For me as a teacher, I love these and I bought two of them. I also went to Trevco. 
Now, Trevco has like such a mass amount of music and they did not disappoint at the conference. So I went ahead and bought a mound of music. I bought some world music that I'm looking to play, um, some tango, some Russian music. Um, I, I will put a link to all the music in the description box down below that I ended up picking up, but it's largely solo works that I want to build into my repertoire, um, and it could be good for when I go and perform at different universities. And I also picked up duets because I love playing new duets in my uh, lessons with students. It's a great way for me to see what they're doing while I'm simultaneously reading music with them in a chamber ensemble. So I picked up some uh, new duets as well. Okay, Forrest. I did some damage at Forest, totally unintentionally. It's just one of those things that just kind of happened and it was a conference and I didn't have to pay shipping. So let's go through first the little goodie bag and then I'll talk you through more of the things that I picked up. Um, I got some unicorn thread. It is variegated and it has all of these bright colors so I'm calling it unicorn thread. And I have to admit that there was only one spool of this specific type left and I did fight an oboist for it and we did some paper, scissor, rock. I luckily won out and I have the unicorn thread for, it just fell on the floor. I also picked up this luggage tag and this luggage tag has of course a bassoon on it and says bassoon and this is going to go with my new bassoon case that I have on order. They're still trying to figure out if it will come in in the July shipment because it does have to be custom made or if it will come in in the October shipment but I did go ahead and order a brand new case which I'm excited about. Okay, this just looks like, what is that? You can't tell, can you? Okay, let's open it up and just dig in here. This is foam that goes inside of a reed case and um, it holds the reeds so that any box that you've got or tin, you can go ahead and make into a reed case. And this has been on the agenda for me to purchase for such a long time because I want to do a tutorial on make your own reed case. Uh, be sure to leave me a comment if you want to see that. Um, I was thinking about it, but I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't, is that something you want to see? Let me know. And then this handy little doodad, I think is just gonna live in my purse. It, it doesn't look like much, it's like a little cylinder, but when you unscrew it, on one end you have a spring hook so that you can repair your bassoon and put the spring back in place. And then on the other hand, you have a small little um, screwdriver. So you're all set to go with any repair needs that you might have when you're out bassooning. Or as, always happens in a lesson or right before an audition every time a student will come in and then they're they're just like oh no what do i do i can't play and they're nervous already and blah, blah, blah. we will fix this so i'm gonna have this on the go with me from custom cane i have never worked with custom cane before but i loved working with them at their booth at idrs and i got a mound of geese cane now, Guy's Cane from Custom Cane, um, it's one of the few places that does sell it that is stateside, and they will do the cane to your instructions. So of course, this is gouged cane, this is not gouge shaped and profiled, and it is at 1.3, and the bonus here is that by being at the conference, they let me pick through the entire bundles and grab what it is that I wanted, so that I would choose the pieces. Because if you've watched my Guy's Cane review from Midwest Musical Imports last year, the cane was just not consistent, and there was just a very low level of just quality um, with what I got. Uh, I will link that video in the description box down below so that you can see um, exactly what happened and why I have been looking for other locations to sell geese cane. And the fact that they let me pick out what I wanted as a perk of the conference, absolutely love that. Um, I'm not sure how hard the cane is. I did not use a hardness meter on it, but um, you know, whenever you make the reads, that's the fastest way for me to tell, more so than even a cane hardness meter. So I'm interested to give this a go, and if it works out, there's another vendor, and there's stateside, and that could be very exciting. I also made some fantastic friends, such as Toma, 
and he is of course a composer, arranger, as well as a bassoonist. He lives in Peru, but he studied in St. Petersburg, so there's this great international flair that goes with him, and he hooked me up with one of his new pieces for solo bassoon, and it's all Peruvian dances. So I am extremely excited to play this because I love solo bassoon because there's no accompaniment. It's all just dancing with yourself and your own phrasing. It's kind of like poetry in my mind. And then on top of that, it um, it's, it's world music, which I am a firm believer in, and it exemplifies Peru. And Peru was part of the reason that he was there. They had helped him out. So he gave me a whole, we got to get it in shot here, a whole tote bag of goodies from Peru. So, okay, so I got a Peru t-shirt and it has an, oh, can you see that? It has a bassoon on it, even better. I don't know, okay, there we go. Bassoon, stickers, Peru stickers. I love to put those in my bassoon journals as I take notes. And then, um, oh, another sticker. And then I got a fancy book that I can take notes on before I do YouTube videos and a pen to go with it. So they totally hooked me up with some good stuff. Enjoy that. This is everything that I picked up as part of my international, oh, no it's not. <laughs> From Forest, I am also trying two vocals from The Light Singer. I am trying one of the uh, British straight bend vocals uh, that is an MVL2. Great, has minimal resistance and just a huge sound. And I'm also trying an MLV1 vocal from Forest that is also a Light Singer in gold that is a standard bend. So I will keep you posted on if I end up getting both of the vocals or one of the vocals. Uh, we might have to do some budgeting, but you know how it is when you find a good vocal, you definitely want to hold on to it. Yeah. If you're looking for more information on vocals, I do have an upcoming blog and video post on vocals that is in the works, so do be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. If you want to keep up on all my bassoon adventures, there is always Instagram, Twitter, and even Snapchat, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Coco is totally staring at me. I think she might start barking soon. Oh, did you hear her? <gasps> there we go.